Welcome to yet another instructional video for Further Maths. In this particular video we'll be examining the use of the TI Inspire CAS calculator to construct dot plots, box plots, histograms. The data we'll be using is two fictitious set of results for Maths, Class A versus Class B, each of which contains 14 scores. First step is to enter these scores into the uh, list and spreadsheets of the calculator. So I've labelled them class A and class B for referencing purposes. Okay, so our first task is to construct a dot plot, a box plot and a histogram. So we'll go to our home button, open up our new graphing tool. Down the bottom we'll start with class A. There's our dot plot. We can change our type to a box plot and using the menu our plot type we can also change it to a histogram. So that's for class A. You can always click on that and change that to class B so the class B data is displayed and again we can go through the range of different plots available. Box plot for class B and right back to the start with the dot plot for class B as well. We can also construct parallel dot plots, box plots and histograms. So again, back to the CAS calculator. To do this, we need to add our extra set of data. So menu, plot properties and we want to add an X variable. Option number five. So we've already got class B, let's add class A. So there's our parallel or side by side dot plot and again we can change that to a box plot or a histogram by using the menu option. We'll leave this as a histogram, uh, sorry, rather a, um, a box plot for the moment. So the next task I have is to look at the distributions and compare both classes. Okay, so if we go back to our calculator display, you can see here that class A is on generally higher scores than class B However, class B looks more stretched out than what class A has, is. So let's examine three of the main comparisons or four of the main comparisons we can use when comparing data. The first one is we can look at the central tendencies. Now in a box plot we tend to look at the median for our central tendencies and we can compare those particular calculations. So class A has a median of 79 and class B has a median of 56. So as a result, we can say that on average, class A has performed better than class B. Now writing this out as an answer, we can make that statement, but we must show a statement including our quantitative class A and class B measurements. We can't just say A is better than B on average, we need to back it up with our numbers. So either as I've done here, write a summary, or within the statement, say that class A in brackets a median of 79 has performed better than class B in brackets a median of 56. Second way in which we can do a comparison is looking at the variation of the spreads. Again, we can look at the range of A and B, which compares the maximum score to the minimum score, or the interquartile range of, of class A and B, which compares Q3 to Q1, the upper quartile to the lower quartile. So we go back here and we can find our minimum value for class B was 19, our maximum was 90, giving us a range of 71, our minimum for class A was 46, and a maximum of 99. You can also compare the interquartile range for Q1 and Q3 for both sets of data. So we can see here that our range was 53 for class A and 71 for B, so B has much greater spread looking at the range. However, our interquartile range were exactly the same, 22 in both cases. So the statement I'd make would be that both classes have the same interquartile range of 22, however class B has a greater spread given a range of 71 compared to that of only 53 for class A. Our third means of making a comparison between two distributions is the shape. You can see here both A and B look pretty symmetrical. Um, the middle 50% um, is an even split and most of the whiskers are very similar as well. Perhaps in class B you can see a slightly positive skew. There seems to be a lot more, not a lot more, but some greater variation um, between the median and the third quartile perhaps that suggests a positive skew for class B. Finally, you can make some comparison with the direct quartiles. So in this case, there's a, I like to look at 
Is there anything that lines up in both sets of box plots at the first quartile in class B, second, the third, and the fourth quartile? So what jumps out at me is that the lowest score in class A is in fact better than 25%, the bottom 25% of class B. Also, the top 25% of class A are better than any of the scores in class B. They're above here. And finally, I've suggested that the top 75% of scores in class A are above that of the bottom 75% of class B. I hope that helps some basics with graphing and doing parallel plots and also how you can accurately describe comparisons with distributions.